I completely ruined my AnyCubic resin printer. The linear rail is completely rusted and seized. This is the high precision component that keeps the build plate moving smoothly and accurately. I ruined it by making and using an in-chamber heater to keep the air and resin warm in winter, but this ended up leaving condensation on the rail. Let's see if we can see it apart and get it to work again after hours of cleaning and without losing all of our models. I was pleasantly surprised at how well put together this relatively cheap machine is. All the screws are proper machine screws with socket heads. There are no self-tapping screws. The components fit together nicely. It does help to have a different range of Allen, Allen screwdrivers, both the L wrenches and screwdrivers. And here you can see that I completely missed the homing shield. That's the little thing that triggers the homing sensor on the way down. Um, and I finally figured out that that little you know, bronze colored plate needs to come off. And again, that just comes off with some Allen screws. And then we can basically wind it out. And wait for it. That is the anti-backlash nut with the spring in between to keep some pressure on both sides of the thread. Here you can see I actually really struggled to move the carriage off the slide. It was pretty stiff and took me a while of wiggling and moving it back and forth before it eventually came off. Of course, spilling a number of balls along the way. And then it was a simple matter to take the guide rail off. It just came off with four Allen screws. And there you can see that it is pretty rusty. That's what we're gonna to have to clean. I thought I'd have a go at cleaning with just some oil and Scotch-Brite. The oil helps the, the Scotch-Brite move over the very rusty surface at the beginning. I must say, at this point, I thought the chance of success here was going to be close to zero. And this is a precision component after all. And um, just using a little bit of Scotch-Brite to clean off the rust didn't seem like it was gonna get us back to where it needs to be. This took several hours to clean. Um, and you can see that it's starting to show um, the silver metal again. This is now the other side. And again, the difficulty is actually getting into the, the fine profile details where the balls run. Start to see it starting to clear up. Nothing harsher than Scotch Bright, so no sandpaper, no grit, just Scotch Bright. And there we go. It looks clean. We'll have to see if it actually works. Here I'm just getting into the details of those fine profiles. It's starting to look quite shiny. Most of the rust is gone. And that's it. That's about as clean as I could get it.
Here you can see the individual steel balls that run between the block and the guideway. There are quite a few screws to kind of take this apart. The red bit that you see me taking off now is the way cover. Um, so it basically just wipes the rail um, to make sure that there's no dirt or dust along the way. On the Anycubic, that little hexagonal knob that you see me taking out now is a hard stop uh, in the downwards direction to stop the bolt plate smashing into the screen completely. And here you can see this comes off. And the black bit is the end of the block, the actual end of the block, and you'll see it's got quite an intricate shape on the other side. There's some more screws holding this in place. We take those out and all of the balls come out all over the place. I tried very hard not to lose any. I think I got them all, but um, I guess I'll never be 100% sure. Some of the balls seem to have a life of their and they jump around quite a lot. This end is actually the oiling port um, on the Anycubic. It's, it's filled with a standard Allen screw. And if you take that out, you can actually oil the block from the top. Again, we're taking off the red uh, way cover. Or rather not way cover, the red um, wiper. And then the end of the block. And then that white bit is actually the guideway that directs the balls from the, the inner channel to the guideway and back. I um, spent quite a while cleaning this down with scotch bright and oil yet again. I won't bore you with all of the footage. It was actually quite tricky because to get the inner surfaces, the inner guide surfaces clean was quite difficult, especially with all of the sharp edges. And then I've got this little baby ultrasound unit, um, which I filled with IPA, or isopropyl alcohol. And here you can see the parts being cleaned in the IPA. Here's putting the final bits of block back together and on the rail. Movement seems to be okay. I don't know if there's any micron size stickiness in the movement that will affect the print quality. We'll have to try it out. Here we start putting it back together. I started by just putting one screw in to hold the rail roughly in place. Um, I then found it was actually a lot easier to just tip it on its side and get all the screws tight one by one. Um, taking care to tighten them gently um, as a set, so not completely tightening any one at any point in time, but gradually working them all in um, to make sure that they were evenly tightened and not distorting the rail in any way. This is the anti-backlash nut. Um, it needs to be compressed when you fit it back onto the screw, otherwise it won't perform its function. And so you need to keep it compressed as you're fitting it onto the uh, lead screw. And then this is just, I put one screw in just to um, roughly align. You'll see I don't fully tighten the screw until I've got the rest in. And there it seems to be moving okay. Maybe there's some hope in this after all. Here I'm just testing to see if I can get any movement out of it with the step motor. Um, and here it seems to be working. One millimeter increments at first and then 10 millimeter increments. Um, we can take it all the way to the top, step by step. comes down. What I don't know is if any steps are being lost along the way. 
um, or if the, there's any stickiness on the rail that is introducing some sort of hysteresis on the up and down motion. But here's a fast forward of it going all the way up. And it seems to be doing okay. Here I've refitted the build plate, just cleaning, making sure there's no dust on the, on the screen, adding the piece of paper for the home setting, calibration and leveling. Here yeah, it's coming down to do the leveling of the plate. And you'll see that the bolt plate is still loosely mounted to the bracket. And now just tightening it all up, level with the screen. And with that, we're pretty much done. It's now set and calibrated. With everything put back together and some resin in the vat, here it is printing. Motion upwards, downwards, perfectly smooth, no funny noises. Printed a Prusa test model, which you can see here. All the details came out just perfectly. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe for further videos and hit the notification icon to get notified.